Hi, so let's talk about forecasting proceeds and a distributions waterfall for a venture fund. So you can get really complicated in forecasting out like when actual proceeds happen. The simplest one is basically to say, hey, I put money in, I hold it for a period of time, and I, I receive proceeds for it basically. And so on, uh, on the simplest models for portfolio structure that I use, uh, I basically make an assumption of a certain different types of exits. In this example, you know, write off small, medium, large, and I assume like the average exit multiple I get from them and the average hold period. And the rationale for some differences there, it allows me to capture some timing differences in terms of, you know, maybe I write off some companies early and I get some medium exits kind of earlier to the middle and I get some big exits kind of later as kind of they fully mature. And so I get like some like, allows for some variability in terms of when uh, those kind of proceeds come in over time. And I take a forecast, take a forecast sheet, I take based off of a schedule of, you know, in this example, new investments and follow on investments. I make an adjustment to this, I make this like adjustment line to say what's the total investments by cohort of new. Basically, to say, hey, when I have an exit, I don't want to exit the lag based upon when the fall investments happen because the new and the fall is going to exit at the same time. So I want to do a lag of a time based of the new investment to capture the full capital is deployed in new and follow. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to capture in that kind of a calculation there. And I basically calculate the proceeds that come from them based upon the timing of, of the portion of my companies that exited each different type of exits, the actual multiple, and then the actual kind of uh, proceeds from them. And it comes to the proceeds events. And more complicated methods for this, I have a more detailed portfolio construction models, um, but they capture kind of the same thing, right? To say there's a certain portion of companies are gonna exit each a different round at certain times and at certain values. And I use that same sort of structure to come up with the same idea of creating a, a distribution of, uh, or forecast of proceeds from there. Now, once you have a forecast of proceeds, the next step is basically say, okay, cool, the, what does the fund do with it? So the first step is my default assumption for most of these is that the fund is gonna either recycle some of those proceeds back, right, management refeed recycling, or for a lesser case for evergreen soft funds, they're gonna recycle a lot more of the proceeds above and beyond that. And then the rest of this left over distributions. Now the distributions basically, okay, well, of the distributions, who gets what? Um, the simple models in the waterfall basically are constructed to help understand uh, a very simple like, distribution assumption, which is basically to say, hey, proceeds come in, uh, they're distributed back. First, you return capital to the uh, investors in the fund, to the LP. Once you return capital to, these, to those investors over time, and then you calculate your distributions by saying proceeds minus whatever your applicable carry to pay to the, pay to the general partners. Now, one caveat to that kind of structure is, you know, it's a, it's a simplifying assumption in terms of what a carry structure is, a built-in like structural assumptions in there. One assumes that your carry is only based off like once you've actually returned one X of, of capital. There are structures that can differ from that. If you have say like a, a preferred return or a hurdle rate, uh, you need to achieve a certain rate of return or a total preferred return on top of the actual return of capital before you can earn carry. And that can be greater than one X. In more detailed models, I have uh, structures that are built to handle like a preferred return. And then a GP catch up, which basically says, you know, it's an optional thing sometimes, but it says, okay, once you've actually returned the capital and then return the preferred return to the investors in the fund, in some situations, the GP can then catch up and then carry they would have earned during the period of the preferred return. Then once they catch up, then all proceeds are distributed based upon the to to the investors and the GP, you know, based upon that carry percentage essentially. Um, the next like additional kind of layer on top of it is like a tiered carry. Uh, the more advanced models I have uh, a structure for a tiered carry approach. It says you know you earn a certain carry for you know to a certain one x or whatever net multiple return uh, to to the investors. And then maybe you earn a certain percentage kind of from 1x to 2x, maybe you're in a certain percentage of 2x and above. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to kind of structure a tiered carry approach to that. One additional layer of complication is basically how the GP's com GP commit is, is handled. Um, in some funds, the GP commit is handled as an LP interest, which means you know the GP capital, they get their money back the same way the LPs get their money back. You know, they pay magic fees are charged to the GP commit, carried interest is charged to the GP commit, and from a time perspective, they get it back at the same time. Um, it can also be done separately. So uh, in most of the newer models, I have a, 
uh, uh, basically an on off switch. Uh, if you check the box, it'll, it will exclude the GP, GP commit from the LP capital and does the waterfall a little differently basically. Uh, basically says, hey, all the money goes back to the LPs, not including the GP commit capital. All money goes back to LPs. Once the LP capital is returned, then the carry is paid to the GPs. So a little slight different way to, to handle it. The default is basically that the GP commit is handled as an, as an LP interest, uh, but there's most of the structures I build as an option to handle that. The important thing here is just to know what your agreement is with your LPs, just to know what the, the waterfall distribution, uh, the set of uh, terms that you're agreeing to in terms of the, the agreement with limited partners, and be able to model, model that waterfall appropriately. If you have questions about this, happy to help.